All right, for the post lab, you have to, um, let's see here, three different graphs. And um, let's see here. You have to label the axis for each of these graphs. So this is x for position, and then v for velocity, and then a for acceleration. So let's do that first. So x for meters, and we'll put this right here and call this um, v in meters per second, okay? And then we'll do this again for acceleration. And we'll call this um, minus two. Let's go ahead and superscript that font. Doopy doo da, superscript. There we go. Okay, so now we have x in meters, velocity in meters per second, and acceleration in meters per second squared. All right, so this position and we call this position, not displacement. Okay. Notice the displacement would be from here to here. So that's one position, that's another position. So that's why we call this the position or the x graph. This axis is time. Looks like we have a time stamp at 4 seconds and then another one at 16 seconds. So the position goes towards the, the motion sensor. See, it's getting smaller towards the motion sensor. And then it collides with something. And then the cart goes away from the motion sensor. But these are straight lines. And so it must be constant velocity here and constant velocity here. So on the post lab, I'm supposed to name the axes with units. I'm also supposed to define a basic scale. So I've got 2.1 meters here and 0.5 meters here. I need to apply a basic scale for velocity and acceleration. I don't know those values yet until I work out the solutions for this equation. We have to have an equation for x. So x as a function of t. Okay, t is for time. Here in the square brackets is the meters. That's the units. So this is x as a function of t. For the first four seconds, the line is different than for the next from 4 to 16 seconds. Hmm. How am I going to figure that out? Oh, wait. This equation is not one equation, but rather two. We call this a piecewise function. So let me um, clear out this, this box here. So we have a piecewise function. So the first one, we need to know the initial position. The, the basic form of the equation is x is equal to x naught plus vt. That's the form of the equation that we're going to use over here. But we're going to use it twice. Okay, One for when t is equal to 0 to 4 seconds. And the other, t, the other equation is when t equals from 4 to 16 seconds. So the first equation, let's see here. x naught, well that's 2.1. 2.1 meters. Okay, And it looks like the velocity is negative. Okay, and because rise over run, um, we have a negative number. Let, let's calculate the velocity is equal to, so rise over run. So the final position is 0 0.5. We always do final minus initial minus 2.1 divided by 4 seconds. We could say 4 minus 0, but no, nah, let's just do 4. That's easier. Negative 0.4. Well, that makes sense because this is 1.6 meter displacement in 4 seconds. So we're going to write minus 0 0.4 meters per second. But we're not done because the 0 0.4 meters per second is the wrong unit. It needs to be in meters. Oh, that's a velocity. We need to multiply that velocity by time. That's because time is here, so x as a function of time well, here we go. Here's the initial position. And then we subtract the change in position. Because if we have a velocity and multiply it by time, we're left with meters. And it's going to be a negative change. And so the position is changing negatively. And that's what we see here. Let me stretch out this box because we need to add some constraints. We need to say that um, t starts out at 0 seconds and that it's less than or equal to, oops, got two of them, t. t is greater than or equal to 0. And then t is less than or equal to what? 
oops, four seconds. But I, hmm, you know what? We might have to adjust this later. We'll think about that in a couple minutes. So let's go down a couple lines. And now we're going to describe this equation right here. Hmm. The slope of this equation. Let's figure out the slope for the way back. We have a final position, so equals, um, oh, that's time. Final position of 2.1 minus our initial position, 0 0.5. So that's the rise. And then we need to divide by the run, which is 16 minus 4, which is also known as a particular number is, oh, let's see here, maybe 12. And when we hit return, we find out now we have a positive slope. It's positive 1.33333. So we'll say positive slope for the velocity. So that's plus 0 0.13 meters per second multiplied by time, but now we need the y-intercept. What's the initial condition here? What do we put right here for the initial velocity? We have to be careful. We might be tempted to put 0.5. Let's try that. Let's see if it, this works. 0 0.5 meters. When I have 0 0.5 meters, let's evaluate this equation at t equals 4 seconds. So 4 times 0.143 equals 4 times 0.1333 plus 0.5. What do we get? We get 1.0332. Well, that's up here somewhere. That doesn't work. So this 0 0.5 is the wrong y-intercept. Ooh, I think I just gave it away, the y-intercept. This is supposed to be the initial position when time equals 0. Aha! Time equals zero happens when, let's see if we can do this, just draw this straight back. When this line meets the x-axis, by x I mean the position axis. Ah, so what is that value? Well, we need to go backwards. Um, by 0.13. 0.13 times 4 seconds. That's how long, oops, we want a negative there, right? Plus 0 0.5. The 0 0.5 is the position right here at 4 seconds. And then we want to have a change in position, okay, the velocity times the time, velocity multiplied by time. Yeah, I'm, I'm staring at this for a second because I just kind of drew this. Um, <laughs> we should move this up. Well, let's see how hard this will be. Well, this, this axis should move up um, because of the scale that I drew. I, <laughs> I didn't draw the scale very carefully. It'll be slightly negative, the intercept. Okay, so we're going to type in this number here, negative. 0 0.03 meters. Okay, that's the initial condition when time equals 0. Let's test that. 4 seconds here. So let's create an equation. At 4 seconds, multiplied by 0.13. So that's this portion. And then we want to subtract 0 0.03. What do we get? 0 0.49. So we're right close to 0 0.5. That's just because of rounding errors. So we're close enough. Let's put this back where it belongs as best we can. There we go. And we'll just clear that cell out. And clear that cell out. Now, time constraints, what are they? Well, we have four seconds again. And we have less than or equal to, t is greater than or equal to four seconds. And t is less than or equal to, what, 16 seconds. OK. I'm feeling pretty good about this. So this is our, our what's called a piecewise continuous function. It's piecewise because there's two parts. There's the first equation describing the first four seconds, and the second equation describing the next 12 seconds. 
and it's continuous because the data always exists. Now let's look at velocity. Let's write out the piecewise function for velocity. Well, for the first four seconds, here's my velocity. I've already got it written down. In fact, I'm just going to take this whole thing, modify it a little bit down here. So we're going to get rid of the t because we don't need it anymore. This is a, a velocity, negative 0.4 meters per second for the first four seconds. And then on the way back, we have this. Positive, we'll just reinforce that because this one's negative. Get rid of the t here and then from 4 to 16 seconds. Hmm. How do I plot those lines? The velocity for the first half is a constant, and it's negative 0.4. And the velocity for the second half is positive, and it's 0.13. It's also a constant. Aha, how do I draw a constant? I think I need to draw a line. So let me grab a line here, and we'll draw a line. Uh, the first part is negative. Um, 0.4. So let's put it down about right here. We, we can make up the scales. Got into trouble up above, so we'll make that 0.4. There we go. Let me uh, make this line a little bit. Hello? Line, let's make it um, dark blue. And where are my? That's odd. Sorry. Uh, weights and arrows. Yeah, sorry. I got a little lost there. New version of Excel. and Okay, there we go. Nice, ni nice blue line. So that's the velocity. And then we want to take these objects right here and bring them down here. And we're going to call this negative what? Oops. negative 0 0.4 okay that's the scale mark because remember we're supposed to add scales for the post lab so I've got that velocity and then I've got another velocity up here at about positive 0.13 so we're just doing this approximately and we'll drag this across hold the shift key to get it keep it straight so there's for the second part and we can bring these two things bada bing and bada bing Bring them up here. Zero point one three. Okay, so now I've created my basic scale. Now I've got these velocities straight here and straight here. Now there's a problem here because of um, hmm, can I have two velocities at the same time? Well, let's see here. No, I can't. I can't be going towards the motion sensor and then away from the motion sensor at the same point in time. So I've got a problem. What should I do about this? Well, I think what I need to do, maybe you remember this from math class way back when, I need to draw an open circle. Let's make this a little smaller. What I'm saying with the open circle is I do not know what the value is right here at this time. Okay, and so we call this a piecewise discontinuous function. I can get ever close to four, but I don't know what the slope is of this line at four seconds. Ah, so over here I'm gonna have to change some things. Right here I'm gonna have to say what? Less than four. And here t is gonna be greater than four. I cannot have the equality here and I'm going to add a new, uh, a new equation here. I'm going to say undefined at t equals 4 seconds. Because I don't know what the slope is at 4 seconds. The slope of this line. Okay. If you've taken calculus, this point right here is called a cusp. And we cannot take the derivative at a cusp. The derivative does not exist. And it makes sense physically that we cannot go two different velocities at the same time. So we're going to change. No, this one's actually OK, because this equation works um, all the way up to 4 and starting at 4. 
Okay, so this one is piecewise continuous, but this one we have to be careful. The acceleration, what is it going to look like? Let's take this line and just put it here at zero because there's no change in velocity, no change in velocity, and we'll just draw it all the way across. But I think we're going to have to be careful and say that the acceleration at this point, at four seconds, is undefined also. Okay, So we could do this easily and just say um, undefined. Well, actually, let's do it this way. Let's say the acceleration in meters per second per second. Oh, silly me. Per second per second. It's at zero for um, t is not equal to four seconds. <laughs> so so that, that's a quick way to do it. It's always zero except for t equals. Um, four seconds. Then we can say undefined at t equals four seconds. Okay, so there we go. Now I think we're finished. We've labeled all our axes. We've created a basic scale. Here we didn't need a scale because it's just zero. And we've drawn the curves for velocity and acceleration. And we've written the equations of motion. Now, if this were real motion, we'd actually have to have a curve right here, because we'd have to slow down and speed up, which means we'd have kind of an S shape right here, going through 0 and then speeding up again. And then right here, we'd have an acceleration that peaked up and then came back down for real motion. We can actually affect this motion with a cusp if we have a sample rate that's slower than the, than the collision. So if we collided and switched directions in between samples, we could actually get this graph. So I hope this helps a little bit on the post lab.